It's Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. The Wicked Witch! My little party's just about to begin. Good! Seize them! Seize them! Thought you were being pretty foxy, huh? Now I've got the whole lot of you. Let's see. How shall I start the fun? You first, Scarecrow. <laughs> How about another ball of fire? No, 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 ah! no, 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 fire. The hell, by burning, I'm burning. I'll help you. Just suck in the water. 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 No, no. Put down that water. <gasps> oh, thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Oh, you cursed brat. You've killed me. You've killed me. Nonsense. I, I just happened oh. to splash some water on you, too. Oh. Look, the witch... She's melting. Oh, what a world, what a world. Who would have thought that a good little girl like you could destroy my beautiful wickedness? I'm going, I'm going fast. She is gone. Look, nothing but a little steaming puddle. She did. You've killed the wicked witch. But I didn't mean to kill her. I I didn't know that water was... You don't understand. Now we're all free. She enslaved us. But now her spell over all of us is broken. Hey! All hail to Dorothy. The wicked witch is dead. Hey! 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 Welcome to Reimagined Radio, a program about radio storytelling. I'm Jack Armstrong. With each episode, we combine dialogue, sound effects, and music to engage your listening imagination. This episode is no different, and here to tell you about it is John Barber, producer and host. Thank you, Jack. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Produced by Metro Goldwyn Mayer, and released 25 August 1939, The Wizard of Oz is noted today for its use of technicolor, fantasy storytelling, musical score, and memorable characters. The film won two Academy Awards, one for Best Song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Judy Garland starred. It was adapted from the children's fantasy novel The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, published in 1900. Critics call it one of the greatest films of all times. But did you know there is a little-known radio adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, also starring Judy Garland? We explore that story in this episode of Reimagined Radio, originating from KXRW-FM, Vancouver, Washington's community radio station. We thank them for their support. And we thank you, for joining us as Reimagined Radio presents The Wizard of Oz. The Lux Radio Theater was a radio anthology series broadcast weekly on NBC and CBS networks from 1934 to 1955. Sponsored by Lever Brothers, manufacturers of Lux Soap, the Lux Radio Theater featured Hollywood actors voicing adaptations from their current movies. Every Monday night broadcast in front of a live audience was like an opening night with marquee lights, new stars, and autograph hounds. Let's listen to this fascinating and timeless radio adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. Something wrong with that dog? Well, he looks fine to me. Well, he he is, Zeke, but he almost wasn't. Miss Gulch hit him just because he gets in her garden and chases her nasty old cat. Oh, sure, honey, sure. Only we're busy, see? I got them hogs to get in. Now, look, Dorothy, you just ain't using your head about that mean old Miss Gulch. You'd think you didn't have a brain at all. Hunk, I have so got brains. Well, use a man. 
When you're walking home with Toto, just keep away from Miss Gulch's place. Your head ain't made of straw, you know. Gosh, Dorothy, that Miss Gulch ain't nobody to be afraid of. Have a little courage, that's all. Courage, see? Why, sure. You know, like, like me. Well, look who's talking. You, courage. There ain't a man in the county who scares easier than you. <laughs> well, well, uh, that's a fine thing to say. Look out, Zeke, that pig's gonna bite you. Well, what pig? Help, help! <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> now, cut that out. Scaring a man half to death like that. Here now, here. What's all this jabber weapon when there's work to be done? It's about Toto, Eddie M. Miss Gulf says she's going to go and get the sheriff and... Now, I thought you and Hickory were supposed to be fixing that wagon. Oh, we are, Miss Gail. Hammer that ranch, Hickory. And feed them hogs, Zeke, before they worry themselves into anemia. Yes, ma'am. Now then, child, what's your trouble? Eddie M., really, do you know what Miss Gulf said she was going to do to Toto? She said she was... They there you go again, imagining things. You know, you always get yourself into a fret over nothing. Oh, but this time... Now, you just help us all out this afternoon. Find yourself a place where you won't get into any trouble. i got to get back in the house. Yes, Auntie Em. Come on, Toto. <laughs> Do you suppose there is such a place, Toto, where there isn't any trouble? There must be. Not a place you can get to by a boat or a train, but it's far, far away. Behind the moon, beyond the rain. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. There's a land that I heard. That you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me, where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where. And Miss Gulch, surely you don't mean that. Why, that little that dog... That dog's a menace just... to the community. I'm taking that animal to the sheriff and make sure he's destroyed. Destroyed? Oh, no, no, please. You, you must... Uh, uh, honey, uh, we uh, didn't know you were there. Toto didn't know he was doing anything wrong. I'm the one who ought to be punished, Uncle Henry. I let him go in her garden. There's a law protecting folks against animals like that. No, no, please. Well, we can't go against the law, Doris. Now you're being smart. Give him to me. No. I won't let you take him. I won't. You're a witch, a wicked old witch. Doris. Oh, please, Auntie Em, please. Oh, I got him at last. And there's nothing any of you can do about it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, 
Now, come on, Dorothy. Cheer up, honey. Please, honey. I don't feel like talking. Not to anybody. Not even to Toto? Oh, you know he's gone. You know Miss Gulch took him away. I know something else, too, honey. Toto must have jumped out of her basket and run back home because there's a little brown and white dog looking all over for you. Oh, oh Toto. Toto, you're back. Toto, Toto. You came back to me, Toto. Oh, I thought you were dead. I, I... They'll be coming after you. Miss Gulch and the sheriff, maybe. We've got to run away. Now, Toto, where no one will ever find us or, or, or take you away again. Yes, Toto, we've got to run away. It's getting dark, Toto. I, I think maybe there's a storm coming. But we'll just keep going, won't we? I see what you mean, a wagon. A horse in a wagon and, and a man. And there's a big sign on the wagon. Wait, I think I can see what it says. Professor Marvel, acclaimed by the crown heads of Europe. Let him read your past, present, and future in his crystal. Well, who might you be? Uh, I guess it's all right, Toto. He... He looks like a nice man. Well, if you're not going to tell me who you are, suppose I tell you. But how can you? <laughs> Professor Marvel knows all tells all. Your past, present, and future for 25 cents, a quarter of a dollar. Uh, two bits, if you prefer. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can afford it. Oh, so your name's Dorothy, is it? How did you know that? Well, on the one hand, perhaps I saw you in my crystal, and on the other hand, perhaps a fellow named Zeke Passed by a while ago looking for you. Oh, I see. Uh, but don't you think for one minute I couldn't have figured it out for myself why Professor Marvel and his magic crystal have amazed royalty and peasantry alike the world over? Oh, please, Professor. Can't we go with you and see all the crowned heads of Europe? Oh, do you know any? Uh, oh, uh, you, you, you mean the sign on my wagon? I, I don't suppose you could take just a, a little look in your magic crystal for me... For nothing, I mean. Matter of fact, young lady, I already have. Oh, just practicing, you understand. And you know what I saw? What? A woman. Tears in her eyes. Careworn. A woman looking for someone. And her name is... Uh... Uh, Auntie M? Kindly allow me to supply the answers. Her name is Annie M. Someone has almost broken her heart. Me? Well, someone she loves very much. And then just before the crystal went dark, I, I saw her put her hand over her heart and drop, drop down on the floor. Oh, no. No. You don't suppose she could really be sick, do you? Oh, I, I've got to go home right away. Go home? I thought you were going along with me. Oh, but I've got to get to her right away. Toto, come on, Toto. We're going up. Goodbye, Professor, and thank you. But don't waste any time. There's a windstorm blowing up. Oh, poor little kid. Hope she gets home all right. through the sky, barns and buggies, and there goes our chicken roost. Toto, we're caught in the cyclone. We're right up inside the middle of the cyclone. But, but there's old Mr. Gallagher in his rowboat. Mr. Gallagher! Howdy, Miss Garth. It's kind of breezy, ain't it? And Uncle Henry Pepper. Bossy! Bossy! I, I don't understand this at all. Things are flying around so fast that I can... I can... Look! Miss Gulch! <laughs> now she's on a broomstick. She is a witch. Don't worry, Toto. I won't let her... You stop moving, Toto. We're standing still. Well, we can't stand still up in the middle of the air. We're going to fall. We are falling. We're falling. We're falling. We're falling. <laughs> We 
we've landed. But where? Where, where are we? Well, it's a regular little village. And look, houses and streets and trees and fountains. <laughs> yes, you're quite right. That is our house over there. We must have bounced out when we landed. But what place is this? <laughs> I have a feeling we're being watched. I have another feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Well, we must be over the rainbow. Toto, look. There's a big bubble coming down the street, and, and there's someone inside it. A lady, and she's stepping out of it. Oh, now I know we're not in Kansas. Tell me, please, are you a good witch or a bad witch? Me? Oh, I'm, I'm not a witch at all. I'm Dorothy Gale from Kansas. Oh. Well, I am a little muddled. The munchkins just summoned me because... It... Munchkins? You happen to be standing in the very center of their village, you know. And uh, they sent for you? Because some new witch has just dropped a house on the Wicked Witch of the East. See? Over there. Oh, but that's our farmhouse from, from Kansas. Now look where I point my wand. <gasps> Two red slippers. Exactly. Two red slippers protruding from under the farmhouse. All that's left of the Wicked Witch of the East. And since it's your farmhouse, obviously you're responsible. Oh, you've made the munchkins very happy, my dear. If, uh, if you please, what are munchkins? The little people who live in this land. It's munchkin land. And you are now their national heroine. And who are you? Why, I'm Glinda, of course. The Witch of the North. Witch? But you're beautiful. Thank you. You see, only bad witches are ugly, and I'm a very good witch. Now, suppose I call the munchkin. Come out, come out, wherever you are. And meet a young lady who fell from a star. She fell from a star. She fell from a star. And after she said is the name of the star. Well, munchkin. Have you nothing to say to her? Where's the mayor? Oh, there you are. Uh, first of all, Miss Dorothy, a little floral tribute. Oh, what beautiful flowers. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, there will be, of course, a parade and general celebration with a brass band and a regiment of cavalry. Meanwhile, oh, let the joyous news be spread. The wicked old witch at last is dead. <laughs> Little pretty, I can cause accidents too. Aren't you forgetting the ruby slippers? The slippers. My sister's slippers. There they are. Still on her feet over there. Well, I'll just take them. Just a moment, if you please. Ruby slippers, slippers red. Leave the feet of she who's dead. I summon my authority and bid you serve Miss Dorothy. The slippers. What are you doing to them? Now they're on my feet. You give them back to me. Never. There they are, and there they'll stay. You nasty little girl. They're of no use to you. Don't be frightened of a Dorothy. You stay out of this, Glinder. I'll fix you as well. Rubbish. You have no power here. Be gone before somebody drops a house on you, too. Very well. I'll bide my time. As for you, my fine lady... You heard what she said. Be gone. I'll get you yet, my pretty. And your little dog, too. <laughs> Away, broomstick. Away! It's all right, Munchkin. Don't hide your faces. 
She's gone. <laughs> now then, my dear, the sooner you get out of Oz, the safer you'll sleep. Oh, I'd give anything to get out of Oz. But how? Which is the way back to Kansas? Kansas? The only person who might know would be the great and wonderful Wizard of Oz himself. The Wizard of Oz? Is he good or is he wicked? Oh, very good, but very mysterious. He lives far off in the Emerald City. Uh, did you by any chance bring your broomstick with you? Uh, no, I'm afraid I didn't. Well, then you'll have to walk. The munchkins will see you safely to the border. And remember, never let those ruby slippers off your feet, or you'll be at the mercy of the wicked witch of the West. But, but how do I start for the Emerald City? All you have to do is follow that yellow brick road. Helper, munchkins, the yellow brick road. Helpers, attention! Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of a whiz, if ever a whiz there was. If ever, oh, ever a whiz there was, the wizard of Oz is one because, 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 because. because. Because of the wonderful things he does. Oh, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You are listening to Reimagined Radio. Our episode is the radio adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, performed by Judy Garland and other actors for the Lux Radio Theater, 25 December 1950. You are listening to Reimagined Radio. Our episode is The Wizard of Oz. This is John Barber, producer and host. We'll return to our episode in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you about The Fusebox Show. It's a different kind of radio storytelling with its own form of wizardry. Here's a sample. Fusebox. We're just as happy as a bevy of Turkish aqua gophers on a slip and slide. <laughs> Catch Fusebox the first Wednesday of the month at 12.30 p.m. here on KXRW 99.9. Learn more wherever you get your podcasts or at the Fusebox Show website, www.thefuseboxshow.com. You are listening to Reimagined Radio. Our episode is The Wizard of Oz, a little-known radio adaptation of the 1939 film starring Judy Garland. She was 16 years old when the film was made. In this radio adaptation, in 1950, Judy Garland, 28 years old, is the only original cast member. She recreates her starring movie role as Dorothy Gale, along with a fine cast for the Lux Radio Theater. Let's continue listening. We're still on the yellow brick road, but now it goes in two different directions. Which way do we go? Pardon me, but that way is a very nice way. Who, who said that? <coughs> oh, don't be silly, Toto. That's just a scarecrow in the cornfield. Scarecrows don't talk. On the other hand, that way is very pleasant also. Why, he did talk. Is there anything so unusual about that? Well, yes, there is. And why do you shake your head? I mean... Both yes and no at the same time. Oh, that's my trouble. I never can make up my mind about anything. Oh? The fact is, I haven't got a brain. Let's take a look at my head, you see? It's straw. Just straw like the rest of me. But how can you talk if you don't have a brain? Oh, some people without brains do an awful lot of talking. <laughs> don't they? Yes, I guess you're right. Oh, what's he doing, your dog? Toto, why, he's licking your hand. Oh, that's what I thought. I, I guess I don't scare him, huh? <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah, I can't even scare a crow. They come from miles around. They pick off my straw for their nest. It, it's not at all flattering. <laughs> I'm, I'm a failure just because I haven't got a brain. Well, what would you do with a brain if you had one? Do? Why, if I had a brain, I could... 
I could. I could while away the hours, conferring with the flowers, consulting with the rain. And my head I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching, if I only had a brain. I'd unravel every riddle for any individual in trouble or in pain. With the thoughts you'd be thinking you could be another Lincoln if you only had a brain. Oh, I could tell you why the ocean's near the shore. I could think of things I never thought before. And then I'd sit and think some more. I would not be just a nothing, my head all full of stuff and my heart all full of pain. And perhaps I'd deserve you and be even worthy of you if I only had a brain. Wonderful. Just imagine a scarecrow singing and dancing. Why, if our scarecrow back in Kansas could do that... What's Kansas? Well, that's where Toto and I come from. And I want to get back there so badly that I'm going all the way to the Emerald City to get the Wizard of Oz to help me. Oh, wizard? Do you think if I went along, he could give me some brains, maybe? Oh, I think you'd better stay here. I've got a witch mad at me, and you might get into trouble. Oh, but I'm not afraid of a witch. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, except maybe a lighted match. Well, since you're made out of straw, I can hardly blame you for that. Oh, won't you take me with you, please? Of course I will. Gladly. Oh, Ray, I'm going to leave the cornfield. And see a wizard. <laughs> I hope. What are we waiting for? <laughs> We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of the wizard of Oz. Oh, the wizard of Oz. The wizard of Oz. The wizard of Oz. Scarecrow. Huh? Do, do you see what I see? Well, not knowing what you see, how can I say that what I see is what you... Oh, wait a minute. Look, over there. That's just what I mean at the edge of the forest. It's a man. A man made out of tin and holding an axe. Come on, Dorothy. Be careful, please. You too, Tony. Look, look here. Here on the grass. An oil can. Oil can! Did you say something? Oh, no. He did. He said oil can. He wants me to oil him. My mouth. He said his mouth. All right, just a minute now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, joy. Oh, bless. I can talk again. I can talk. Oh, oh my arms, please. My elbows. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. A am, I, am I doing it right? Oh, yes, yes. What a relief. I've held this axe up for ages. But my goodness, how did you ever get like this in the first place? Oh, well, uh, about a year ago, I was chopping that tree when suddenly it began to rain. I rusted so solid, I haven't been able to move since. Well, you're perfect now. Perfect. Just bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. Beautiful. What an echo. You see? Empty. The tinsmith forgot to give me a heart. No, no heart. heart. No heart. Oh. All hollow. And believe me, not having a heart, well, presents problems. When a man's an empty kettle, he should be on his metal. And yet I'm torn apart. Just because I'm presuming that I could be kind of human if I only had a heart. I'd be tender, I'd be gentle, and awful sentimental regarding love and art. I'd be friends with the sparrows and the boy that shoots the arrows if I only had a heart. Picture me a balcony above a voice sings low wherefore art thou Romeo I hear a beat how sweet just to register emotion jealousy devotion and really feel the part 
I'd stay young and chipper and I'd lock it with a zipper if I only had a heart. Well, I certainly see what you mean. You were whispering, you and him, while I was singing. Well, we were just wondering if you'd care to go with us to the Emerald City. Then you could ask the Wizard of Oz for a heart. But suppose he wouldn't give me one when we got there. Oh, but he will. He must. We've come such a long way already. Ah, you call that long, my pretty? Why, you've just begun. <laughs> Who's that? Who's laughing? The witch, the wicked witch. Well, my two fine gentlemen... Helping the little lady along, are you? Well, stay away from her. Oh, oh yeah? I'll stuff a mattress with you, you straw man. And you, I'll use that tin carcass for a beehive. <laughs> Gosh, what a witch. Want to play ball, Scarecrow? Well, here. No, no, look out, it's a ball of fire. Fire, no, no, no. no. <laughs> stand still, stand still. I'll stamp out the fire with my ten feet. <laughs> You can move now. Oh, much obliged, Tin Woods. Oh, yes, we both are. But I'm still not afraid of her. I'll see that you get safely to the wizard now, whether I get a brain or not. Stuff a mattress with me. Ha! Mm. And I'll see that you reach the wizard whether I get a heart or not. Oh, you're the best friends anybody ever had. And it's funny, but I feel as if I'd known you all the time. You're just like Hunk and, and, and Hickory. But I... I couldn't have known you, could I? I certainly don't see how. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. We know each other now, all right. That's right. We do. <laughs> then to us. To us. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of a wizard. Uh, d does anybody happen to know where we are? Oh, uh, that's easy. We're in a forest. And I don't like it. It's so dark and, and creepy. <laughs> Toto, Toto, come back. Stay on the path. He, he sees something behind that bush. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so do I. I think I do, too. It's a lion. A lion. He's coming this way. Stay where you are. Uh... Put him up. Put up your fist. Ah! I'll fight you with one paw tied behind my back. I'll fight you standing on one foot. Stand up and fight. Ah! I'll swallow you first, you little peewee dog. Shame on you. You let that little dog alone. Let him alone. <laughs> Slap me for. <laughs> I didn't bite him. <laughs> Look, the lion. He's crying. Well, you tried to bite him. Well, you didn't have to go and hit me, did you? <laughs> Is my nose bleeding? Oh, of course not. My goodness, you're nothing but a great big coward. <laughs> you're right, I'm a coward. I haven't any courage at all. Do you suppose the wizard would help him to... I don't see why not. Why don't you come with us, Lion? We're on our way to see the Wizard of Oz and get the Tin Woodsman a heart. And him a brain. And I'm sure he could give you some courage. <laughs> Well, wouldn't you feel degraded to be seen in the company of a cowardly lion? <laughs> I would. <laughs> no, of course not. Here, you you better take my handkerchief. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've been so nice to me. Now, please stop crying. <laughs> I'll try. But, but how did you get this way in the first place, Lion? Well, if you can spare the time, it... It was like this. Yes, it's sad, believe me, Missy, when you're born to be a city without the vim and bird. But I could show my prowess, be a lion, not a mouse, if I only had the nerve. I'm afraid there's no denying. I'm just a dandelion, a fate I don't deserve. 
cold. I'd be brave as a blizzard. I'd be gentle as a lizard. I'd be clever as a gizzard. If the wizard is the wizard who will serve, then I'm sure to get a brain, a heart, a home, the nerve. Then let's be on our way without any more delay. That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> if it were right. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is the wizard of Oz. Ha ha! Little do they know I too was hiding in the forest. I'll still get those ruby slippers, and then my power will be the greatest in Oz. And woe to those who try to stop me! I'm all broomstick away! <laughs> Look, everybody, look! Emerald City, oh, at last, at last! Emerald City, eh? Gosh, it's all green. And with turrets and towers, and look how big it is! But how do we get in? This wall goes to all around everything. It most certainly does. Look at the top of the wall. Oh, who are you? That's my question. Who are you? Well, if you'll let us in, we'll be glad to tell you. Let you in, huh? Well, you look harmless enough. Open the gates of Emerald City! <laughs> want to see the wizard, please. The, 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 the wizard? Oh, but nobody can see the great Oz. Nobody's ever seen the great Oz. Even I have never seen him. Oh, please. The good witch of the north sent me here. Prove it. She's wearing the ruby slippers she gave her, you see? Well, bust my buttons. So she is. Then you'll take us to the wizard? There you go again. Wizard. Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, of course, uh, wizard. Uh, meanwhile, you'd all better wait. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, well, what is it now, good grief man? Can't you? I you want to sir, in the public square. Uh, who, who wants me? The entire me? population of Emerald City. There's something going on, sir, and I don't like the looks of it. No, no, no. What's everyone so excited about? Don't you see? Up there in the sky. Huh? Well, that's quite a trick, isn't it? Dorothy, it's sky riding. Letters of black smoke all across the sky. Well, well, what does it say? It's the Wicked Witch. It says, it says, surrender, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy? Dorothy! <laughs> The great and powerful Oz has the situation well in hand, I hope. So you can all go home. Go on, scatter. You draw flies. But if you please, sir, we want to see the wizard right away. Certainly not. Not nobody, not no how. But she's Dorothy. The witch is Dorothy? Nope, not even you. Oh, please. Please, it's the, it's the only way I'll ever be able to get home. Not nobody, not no how. Annie M was so good to me, and I never appreciated it. Running away, hurting her feelings. What's that? Professor Marvel said she was sick. She may be dying, and it's, it's all my fault. <laughs> I'll get you to the wizard somehow. <laughs> He's crying, too. Oh, you see, I, I had an Aunt M once myself. Oh, this is all highly irregular, but just follow me. Gosh, he just left us in this chamber. It's so dark and echoey, huh? He said the wizard would be waiting for us. <laughs> I'm closing my eyes. Did you just... Tell me when it's all over. <laughs> this is John Barber, producer and host of Reimagined Radio. With each episode, we combine voices, sound effects, and music to spark your imagination. It's a mechanical pig. One of two 
said to exist in the world. Have you seen the second one? Smoke comes out! Black smoke drifting over the city! People in the streets see it now! People trying to run away from it, but it's no use! They're falling like flies! Reimagined Radio. Nothing to see, everything to hear. Heard the third Monday of every month at 1 p.m. Sundays at 6 p.m. on KXRW 99.9 FM. Visit our website for more information and listening opportunities. Reimagined Radio. Dot net. You are listening to Reimagined Radio. Our episode is The Wizard of Oz, the little-known radio adaptation of the classic film starring Judy Garland as Dorothy Gale. Let's continue listening. Who is that? I am Oz, the great and powerful. I can't see anybody. Silence! You shall never see me. But if you please, we we must tell you something. Nobody ever tells me anything. I know everything. You, you're a little girl who wants to go home. And you, Tin Man? Yes, Your Honor. Clinking and flattering for the heart. And you? Me, your wizardry? A billowing bear of both these breakfast who beg for a break. And you, Ryan? Oh. He's fainted. Well, lie, lie and wake up. The wizard will be awfully mad. Oh, you, you know? ought to be ashamed of yourself. I, 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 Frightening the poor cowardly lion like that when he came to you for help. Silence! The beneficent Oz has every intention of granting your request. But you must first prove worthy. Oh, we will. We'll do anything. Very well. Bring me the broomstick of the wicked witch of the west. Oh, but but if we do that, why well, we'll have to kill her to get it. Bring me her broomstick and I'll grant your request. Well, what if she kills us first? <laughs> Lion! Leave the great gate of Emerald City. Follow the arrow of of the forest. And head to the witch's castle. Now go, go, and return if you can. The haunted forest, the witch's castle. Well, I, I guess there's nothing else to do but go. That's the spirit, Dorothy. Come on, lion. We're not afraid. We'll get that old broomstick. <laughs> 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 and they think I don't know about it. They think they'll take me by surprise. Ah, at last I'll have them in my power. The little girl, her nasty dog, and the magic ruby slippers. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing, but it was so easy to capture you that I can't help it. At least my friends got away. Toto, too. What do I care about them? It's you I wanted. You and the magic ruby slippers. I had every warrior slave in this castle on the watch for you. Now give me those slippers. No, no. The good witch told me not to. Who that I am. I should know the slippers will never come off as long as you're alive. You, you mean... Ah. Now how shall I do it? I think I'll make up a special batch of poison. Yes, that ought to do it. Some nice, fresh poison. <laughs> look, it's Dorothy's dog. Tin Man, Ryan, look. Oh, we're goners now, all right. He'll lead the witch's soldiers right here to our hiding place. No, no. He's come to take us to Dorothy. Up there in the castle. We can't fail her now. We can't. I'll go. Witch or no witch, I'll tear him apart. I'll knock him cold. I may not come out alive, but I'm going in there. Oh, Lion, that, that, that's wonderful. There's only one thing I want you fellows to do. What's that? <laughs> Dog me out of it. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, no, you don't. Come what may, we're going to rescue Dorothy. All right, Toto, show us the way. This is the room. Toto snipped her out. Dorothy? Who, who is it? It's us. We've come to save you. Open the door. I can't. She's locked me in here. Tin Man, your axe chopped on the door. But that'll make a noise in the guards. Who cares the... about the guards? We'll save you, Dorothy. We'll save you. She'll be back any minute. Hurry, please. Here goes the door. Stand back, Dorothy. <laughs> Come, I knew it. And Toto, Toto. Oh, we'll have you out of this castle before you Where can say Jack Ruff. Oh, the witch, the wicked witch. Oh, my, my little party's just about to begin. Good. Seize them. Seize them. Thought you were being pretty foxy, huh? Now I've got the whole lot of you. Let's see. How shall I start the fun? You first, Scarecrow. <laughs> How about another ball of fire? No, 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 Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. Oh, you cursed brat. You've killed me. You've killed me. Nonsense. I, I just happened to splash some water on you, too. Oh. Look, the witch. She's melting. Oh, what a world. What a world. Who would have thought that a good little girl like you could destroy my beautiful wickedness? I'm going. I'm going fast. Oh. She is gone. Look, nothing but a little steaming puddle. She dead. You've killed the wicked witch. But I didn't mean to kill her. I I didn't know that water was... You don't understand. Now we're all free. She enslaved us. But now her spell over all of us is broken. Hey! All hail to Dorothy. The wicked witch is dead. Hey! 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 And if you don't mind, may I please have her broom? Here, take it with you. Now we can go back to the wizard. And tell him the wicked witch is dead. Onward to Emerald City. She's gone where the government goes. Still can't believe my eyes. You've come back. Back to Emerald City. And we did exactly what the great Oz told us to do. Here. Here's the witch's broomstick. And now, if you don't mind taking us to the wizard... You we... see, he promised us... Uh, uh, you, 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 you promised to all your broomstick. Oh, 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 what an unhappy situation. Unhappy? After all we've gone oh, through... Oh, I, I'm glad there's no one else around to hear this. Hear what? Oh, little girl, there is no great and powerful wizard of Oz. That is, I am the wizard. But he spoke to us himself. I spoke to you. Oh, it was no great trick, a dark room, a few smoke powders. Your, your own imaginations did the rest. Why, well, you... you humbug. Exactly. Oh, you're a very bad man. Oh, no, my dear. I'm just a very bad wizard. <laughs> what about the heart you promised Tin Man? And Scarecrow's brain. Well, anybody can have a brain. That's a very mediocre commodity. Well, I don't have one. Then listen a moment. Back where I come from, we have great universities where men go to become deep thinkers. And when they come out, they know how to think just fine. And with no more brains than you have. Why? But they have one thing you haven't got, a diploma. Therefore, by virtue of the authority in me vested by the Universitatis Committee, um, I hereby confer upon you... The honorary degree of T.H.D. T.H.D.? Doctor of Thinkology. Here's your diploma. Oh, oh, Scarecrow, how wonderful. But, but what about me? I'm still a coward, I think. Of course not. You are merely under the unfortunate delusion that because you run away from danger, you have no courage. A simple matter of confusing courage with wisdom. <laughs> oh, joy, oh, rapture, I've got a brain. <laughs> Back where I come from, Lion, we have men who are called heroes. Yet they have no more courage than you have. But they do have one thing you haven't got. A medal. Medal? Therefore... <laughs> 
for meritorious conduct and conspicuous bravery against wicked witches, I award you the Triple Cross. The Triple Cross? <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, it was nothing. <laughs> you are now a member of the Legion of Courage. As for you, my galvanized petitioner, you want a heart. You don't know how lucky you are not to have one. Hearts will never be practical until they can be made unbreakable. I still want one. Back where I come from, there are men who do nothing but good deeds all day long. And their hearts are no bigger than yours. They're called philanthropists. But they have one thing you haven't got. A testimonial. Testimonial? Therefore, in consideration of your kindness, I present you with this small token of our esteem and affection. A heart. It is a heart. Just remember that a heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved. Listen, <laughs> it ticks. My heart even ticks. It... But, but what about Dorothy? You, uh, you still want to go back to Kansas, hmm? Oh, I do. I do. I wish I could help you, child, but I can. You, you mean uh, I'll never get home? But it, it, it's really rather pleasant here once you get to know the place. And we want you to stay, Dorothy. You see, we love you, you and Toto. And I love you, but what am I to do? What was that? Look what's coming. A bubble. Who's been blowing bubbles around here? Hey, there's somebody in it. It's Glinda. Glinda's a good witch. Oh, help me. Help me. But you don't need my help, child. You've always had the power to go back to Kansas. I have. Then why didn't you tell her before? Because she wouldn't have believed me. She had to learn by herself. Have you learned, Dorothy? Well, I... I think that... that it wasn't enough just to want to see Uncle Henry and Auntie M. And it's a... if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my own backyard. Because if it isn't there, I never really lost it to begin with. Is that right? That's all it is, my dear. Now, your magic slippers will take you home in two seconds. Oh, that, that's too wonderful to be true. Only it's, it's going to be so hard to really say goodbye. I, I love you all so much. Goodbye, Tin Man. Oh, don't cry. You rust so dreadfully. Now, I know I have a heart. It's breaking. Goodbye, Lion. Oh, I know it isn't right, but I I'm going to miss the way you used to holler for help before you found your courage. I never would have found it if it hadn't been for you. And Scarecrow, I think I'll miss you most of all. Goodbye, dear friend. Are you ready now? Yes, I'm ready. Say goodbye, Toto. Now close your eyes and think to yourself, there's no place like home. 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 No place like home. It's Aunt Em, darling. Oh, Henry, look, she's opening her eyes. Oh, Annie Em, it is you. Yes, darling. Hello there. Can I come in? I just dropped by because I heard the little girl got caught in the big cyclone. Well, got a I... bad knock in the head, Professor Marvel, but she's coming around now. We, we thought for a minute she was going to leave us. Sure had us worried, Dorothy. <gasps> Why, you remember me, your old pal, Hunk? Oh. And me, Hickory? You couldn't forget my face now, could you? Zeke, I, I must have been dreaming. I, I was in a place far away, and, 
And you, and you, and you, you were all there. We were? But you, you couldn't have been, could you? Oh, we dream lots of silly things, dear, when we No, Aunt Em, this was a real, truly live place. And all I kept saying to everybody was, I want to go home. And they sent me home. <laughs> oh, Toto, you believe me, even if nobody else does. Of course we believe you, Dorothy. Oh, well, anyway, Toto, we're home. And this is my room. And, and you're all here. And I'm never going to leave here ever, ever again. Because I love you all. Oh, Annie M., there's no place like home. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you That concludes The Wizard of Oz, the little-known adaptation of the 1939 movie starring Judy Garland for the Lux Radio Theater. This radio story was broadcast 25 December 1950. As production for the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz wrapped, it was thought to be too long. MGM studio executives suggested cutting the song Over the Rainbow. That suggestion was ignored, and you just heard 28-year-old Judy Garland reprise that song, which is so much a part of popular culture today. Judy Garland voiced the part of Dorothy Gale. Herb Vigren was Hickory and Tin Man. Hans Conried was Hunk and Scarecrow. Edwin Max was Zeke and Cowardly Lion. Ruth Perot was Auntie M. William Johnston was Uncle Henry. Betty Lou Gerson was Glinda the Good Witch. Noreen Gamel was the Wicked Witch. Gil Stratton was Mayor of Munchkinland. Herb Butterfield was the Wizard. And David Light was Toto. Reimagined Radio is produced with support from KXRW, Vancouver, Washington's community radio station. Content curation and script by John Barber. Sound design, music composition, and post-production by Mark Rose. Graphic design by Holly Slocum Design. Our announcer is Jack Armstrong. This is John Barber, producer and host. Thank you so much for listening, and please join us again for another episode of Reimagined Radio, where we will continue our exploration of radio storytelling. This has been a production of Reimagined Radio. Our radio broadcasts are heard on local, regional, and international community radio stations. For on-demand streaming, point your browsers to our website, Reimagined Radio. That's all one word, no punctuation, dot net. Thank you so much for listening, and please join us again for another episode of Reimagined Radio where we'll continue our exploration of radio storytelling. Hi, this is Marcy Bell Lunchpocket, one of the members of the Narada Radio Company. This portion of Pulpery Theater is brought to you by Arrowhawk Real Trail Mix. Remember, friends, unlike all of those other so-called trail mixes, Arrowhawk, another fine product of irresponsible mills of Oakville, Tennessee, is made up of all those wonderful things actually found on the trail, such as tree bark, pine needles, pebbles, clumps of clay, leaves, 
bird droppings, and for an added crunch, those dried husks that locusts leave on the trunks of trees. But that's not all, friends. Coming soon from Arrowhawk is a brand new protein mix that includes delicious, chewy, dried earthworms. Mm -mm. So remember, Arrowhawk is not available in stores. Go to our website and order the Arrowhawk Real Trail Mix of your choice today. If you're reading trail mix and break your teeth on a rock, chances are you're enjoying Arrowhawk.